This is John Kohler with DiscountJuicers.com. Today I have another exciting episode for you. What I'm going to do today is a blender off. And this is a blender comparison. This is one of the most requested videos that I've been getting for quite a while. What we're going to do is we're going to compare the Omega BL630 to the Vitamix Turbo Blend VS. So the Vitamix has been a long-standing uh, blender in the uh, American market. Uh, it's used by many professional chefs and many people into the living and raw foods lifestyle. Omega, on the other hand, has established a name for itself in the juicer market and are now breaking into the blender market. Now, they have been doing commercial blenders on a related uh, subsidiary company to Omega for many years now. So they're not necessarily new to blenders, but they're new blenders to the Omega brand line now let's talk about the omega bl630 we have today the bl630r which stands for red and it also comes in white and a silver color this has a three horsepower peak commercial motor stainless steel blade assembly automatic shutoff for overload has a nice touchpad variable speed uh, control it also has a timer function built in it also comes with an unbreakable bpa 64 ounce uh, triton polymer container they're saying no plunger is needed and a removable cap for adding ingredients uh, next let's go ahead and remove this box out of the way and here is the bad boy right here so this one will run up to 27,500 rpms and it has a full 10 year warranty which is probably the longest warranty in the blender industry now let's talk about the Vitamix Turbo Blend VS the VS stands for variable speed and this model is identical to the Vitamix 5200 series. Although the only differences are some of the accessories that are included, which actually make the Turbo Bun VS a much better value. Uh, this one has also the uh, variable speed control, no timers built in. It has a two plus peak horsepower motor and has a 64 ounce uh, BPA free carafe, uh, spill proof lid with removable lid plug, and it also includes a tamper. Let me go ahead and remove this box out the way. And here is the bad boy right here. This one will run up to 37,000 RPM. So that's a full 10,000 more RPMs than the Omega model. This one has a full seven year warranty. Now with the Omega, you get a standard instruction book with the Vitamix Turbo Blend VS. It comes with a whole mydrid of accessories, including the tamper, which Omega says you don't need on their model. So this helps you basically uh, push things into the blender so that it can make contact into the blade. This is actually really essential if you're blending things that aren't uh, liquid consistency. In addition to the Vitamix uh, Turbo Blend VS, you also get a nice instruction book. I mean, this is a full color uh, cookbook here with all kinds of vegetarian, vegan, and uh, living foods recipes. Nice full color. And if you really want to make some dietary and lifestyle changes, this is the recipe book you need to guide you and share with you how to eat the healthiest foods on the planet. It's all laid out really nice. Soups, dips and spreads, entrees. I mean, this is the package for a lifestyle change. In addition, this thing just kind of folds out just like that. And you could put that on your kitchen counter and just make some of these recipes in there. Really nice and real simple. In addition, you get a let's get started DVD here and this one pop in your DVD player or your computer to watch and it's going to share with you how to make some of these amazing recipes in the Vitamix. Not shown with the Vitamix Turbo Blend VS, it also includes a hemp nut milk bag which you can use to make nut milks or even uh, do some kind of juicing with the blender. Now I don't necessarily recommend using the blender as a juicer but it will do that. So that's the package this comes with and actually the extra bonus items are definitely in my opinion one of the best things about the Vitamix Turbo Blend VS. Now let's compare the different models. Uh, first we're going to compare the carafes. So you can see the carafes here. The Vita Vitamix carafe is 64 ounces and the Omega uh, BL630 carafe is also 64 ounces rated. Uh, the Vitamix carafe here weighs a little bit over a pound and this guy actually weighs a hunk in three pounds. So actually I had a lady once had arthritis and couldn't lift heavy things if so, then you may not want to get this craft. It's a bit heavier. That's because probably this uh, machined piece of metal here on the bottom and the Vitamix basically has a, a plastic piece on the bottom. Uh, 
Both machines on the bottom you can see have a uh, metal contact and that's the uh, little ribbing there that makes contact with a motor. This is metal and this is metal. So both these machines are metal on metal and this is a high quality machine. Most of the department store machines that you'll find have plastic on plastic and those things tend to strip out over time. Uh, let's see, the height of this carafe is a little bit taller than the Omega carafe and also you can see, let's go ahead and pull these tops off. The uh, Vitamix carafe is a more of a circular shape and gets square at the bottom while the Omega carafe is more kind of square in shape. In addition, the Vitamix carafe has some flutes on it and the flutes uh, may help to uh, mix things up but it also can be a challenge to scoop some stuff out of the carafe you know once it's in there because it's going to get stuck on the flutes. Uh, I like the Omega crab because it's nice and square so if you're blending up things like a macadamia nut dressing and macadamia is about $15 a pound you could easily get it out in the Omega crab whereas it's going to be a little more challenging on the Vitamix crab. Next let's take a look at each of the blades in each of these blenders. So in the Vitamix you can see it has a uh, four prong blade that's like kind of like a star blade and in the Omega Blender, it's a propeller blade. So each of these blades have their pros and cons. The uh, Vitamix blade tends to be actually fairly sharp, more like a knife that performs a cutting action, and the Omega blade isn't quite as sharp. But because the Omega blade uh, is a, a propeller style blade, something could drop down in there, come around and hit the blade and get blended up, whereas the Omega, you're really gonna need that pusher to push things into the blade so that they'll get blended up if you don't have a nice liquid consistency. Next, let's talk about the tops of both the machines. The uh, Omega top is a square top and the Vitamix top is a circular top. Both have these removable plugs so that you can add things while the blender is running. If we look at the other side of the uh, tops here, this is where it gets a little bit interesting uh, based on my personal experience with using these machines. The Vitamix top, uh, basically, if you look at that, it has a nice easy area for cleaning. This uh, little plug removes really easily and now you could easily get into all the nooks and crannies, which are actually not many, to clean the Vitamix top. On the Omega top, if you look at this very carefully, you could see this top, it kind of has like a little indentation and it goes in and this indentation makes it harder to clean. I've actually had that from personal experience. And then you could pull out this top and you can see, let's go ahead and compare the plug on both machines too. And here are the plugs. The plug on the Vitamix is basically a nice, uh, you know, plug that actually has a measured, it's measured two ounces on there, um, which is very easy to clean. Now on the Omega top, it's a not a measuring cup. And in addition, there's all these nice little nooks and crannies that, you know, uh, your blended smoothies may get caught up into and maybe a little bit more challenging to clean. So uh, next, what we're going to do is go over the bases of each of the units. Now let's talk about the base of each of the machines here. Over on this side, we got the Vitamix Turbo Blend VS base. They have a few standard controls on it. It has a on and an off switch. Turns it off, turns it on. This is a variable speed switch, much like the old uh, volume control on your television. The higher the number, the faster it goes, and then you have a high and variable speed. So the variable speed, when it's down position, you can use this control to change the speed of the blender. And when it's on high, it's just going to run at full tilt. On the top of the machine, of course, like we showed earlier, we have that metal on metal contact area. We also have a rubber sound dampening pad. So that will, uh, you know, ensure that the blender stays a bit more quiet. Let's go ahead and look at the back of the machine here. On the back of the machine here, this one clearly states made in the USA with a minimum of 70% US content. It's uh, 11.5 amps. And on the bottom here, it has four rubber feet and has a nice handy cord storage on the bottom. Let's go ahead and flip that one back over. Over here on this side, we have the Omega BL630. This also has a sound dampening pad. This is kind of like a rubber, but it's more like a plasticized rubber, whereas the uh, pad on the Vitamix is much softer. Also has the metal on metal contact. This uh, base is all red, but it does also come in the white and the silver. And here's the controls on this machine. It has an on and off touch pad. Uh, so that's the on, that's the off. It has an infinity, so that'll just basically run the uh, blender forever. And it has a pulse. And this one has a timer which is a really nice thing, and a speed control. So much like on the Vitamix, the speed control will let you dial the speed up from zero to 10. 
and the timer will let you set the time you want the blender to run. So you could set it for 15 seconds, 25 seconds, 35, 45, one minute, two minutes, three minutes, four minutes, five minutes, or six minutes. And how this works is you set it to the time you want, you put it on the speed you want, you press the on button, and it'll run for that predetermined amount of time. Next, let's flip this blender over, and on the under underside of the blender there, you're gonna see a few things. Number one, they got that handy dandy cord storage, much like on the Vitamix, but there also is a reset button. So this reset button can be very handy in case you overload the blender. The reset button will pop out, you could press it back in, and you'll be back to blending. On the Vitamix, what happens is if it overloads, it has a thermal overload, so it'll just cut itself off and it will not turn back on until you let it rest and actually cool off for a little bit. And in addition, this one has the uh, ETL certification. This is the commercial certification, so if you have a restaurant or juice bar, you can feel confident and use this machine in your restaurant or juice bar. That'll do it for the uh, bases of each of the machines. Now just uh, picking up each base, picking up the Vitamix base and picking up the Omega base, they're actually both about the same weight. So maybe the motors are about the same heavy dutiness. <laughs> so the first thing we're gonna do is one of the common tasks that I like to do in the blenders that can be very hard on a blender. And what it is, is we're gonna take some flax seeds and grind them up into a flax meal or a flax powder. Now, high power blenders will also grind things like grains, but it may not get the texture you're looking for, like a specific or you know a dedicated grain mill would. So we got an even amount of flax seeds measured out, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna dump a one bunch of flax seeds into the Vitamix carafe. And we're gonna dump the other batch of the flax seeds into the Omega carafe. Now we're gonna put the lids on both of the machines. And we're gonna turn both machines on high at the same time. So let's see here, that's on high, ready to go. All we gotta do is flick the switch up. This one is also all the way cranked up on high. And all we have to do is hit the on button. So we're gonna hit the on button and turn it on. So we turn both machines off and now we get to check the results. Let's see here. Both machines look like they did fairly well uh, blending all the flax seeds up. I'm going to tap the sides down. The flax seeds do contain some oil in there that you know will uh, allow it to stick to the sides. One of the reasons why I like flax seeds in the first place is because they're high in omega-3 fatty acids and most American standard American diets are deficient in omega-3s and they're not getting enough omega-3s. So uh, anyways, let's go ahead and dump this stuff out and look at that nice clean texture. I mean, this is actually a nice flax meal or flax flour. I don't see any unground pieces of flax in there. Next, let's check out what the Vitamix did. We'll take off that top. And this one seemed to got a, get a lot more stuck down in there. So we're gonna have to go ahead and uh, push that out a little bit with my finger all right there we go let's pour that out too and there's a nice uh, texture on that so this is out of the Vitamix so you know I'm pretty much seeing all the stuff got ground up as well I, I see actually a few uh, flax seeds that actually didn't get ground up I think what happened was because the bottom of the container was a little bit narrow um, and the oil came out of the flax as it gr got ground up some of the stuff stuck so normally i'll uh, stop the blender and tap it up a little bit so that you'll get a perfect blend every time other than that though actually check it out you could see there's a color difference here which is a little bit interesting the uh the flax from the vitamix looks to be a little bit more like like i don't know like a lighter color and the flax on the omega Oh, it's actually, now I'm seeing a few small granules of things unground as well. Let's see, let's go ahead and do the field test. So it's nice and a fine powder on both machines. Actually, if I had to say one was a little bit finer, I would have to say the Omega got a little bit finer, and that's just basically because the blades are sharper. Once again, with sharper blades, things are going to get cut more, and with a duller blade, things are going to get beat up a little bit more. So... 
I definitely would have to say that although everything didn't get uh, ground up in the uh, Vitamix, it came out uh, definitely better overall. So now for the next test, what we're going to do is we're going to make some coconut milk. And what we do is we got 32 ounces of water in both these uh, pitchers here. We're going to pour that into each of the blenders. And it fills each of the blenders about halfway because each of the blenders hold about 64 ounces. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to put the coconut in. So basically we have the meat of a white coconut, uh, one whole meat, and these are about similar aged. We're going to go ahead and break this up into some chunks here uh, and drop it into the blender. And that's the uh, Omega BL630 all ready to go. Here is the Vitamix. Once again, taking this coconut meat. Now, coconut milk is an excellent addition to your diet. It's high in medium chain fatty acids, and it makes a great substitute for cow's milk that you know many people may have allergies to these days. It's very easy to make in each of these blenders. The basic uh, recipe is using some real coconut, either the brown or white coconut. Blend it up with some water, and then you're going to use what's called a nut milk bag, which is actually included it with the Vitamix to strain out all the fiber. And actually, we're not going to make the nut milk in this specific video. We're just going to blend it up and show you guys how it would look. Uh, so next, we're going to go ahead and put the top on. And once again, we're going to blend these at high speed for the same amount of time. One, two, three. Here the Omega is kind of like having a little bit of a rough start. It's kind of blending it, but you can hear the RPMs aren't quite as quick on the Omega as on the Vitamix. So the Omega blender turned off and we turned off the Vitamix. And uh, next, let's go ahead and strain the results. We're going to strain it through a standard sieve, so this is going to get most of the pulp out, but for an ideal coconut milk, you'd want to strain it down to a much finer consistency through like a nut milk bag. So here's the uh, results of the Vitamix and the results of the Omega. Now what this is going to show, it's going to show how much was blended or not blended up. So we're going to go ahead and pour this through. Wow, and you could clearly see the differences. I can't really go too much more because what's going to happen is this is going to overflow. <laughs> you can see here on the Omega it left a lot more chunks of pulp in here. We're going to just going to go ahead and shake that up to get a lot of the liquid down. And uh, pour that through there. Whoa! <laughs> Let's go over to the Vitamix side and uh, do the same thing. This one seems to be a lot more ground up and it's having a problem um, getting strained down because the, uh, the hole size on the strainer is probably fairly similar to the uh, consistency of the uh, mixture. It's actually not going down quite as easy. Alright, so that did actually a fair good job of making the coconut milk, which is using one of these sieves as a strainer that basically left out uh, most of our pulp on the Omega blender. So over on the Vitamix side, this is having a much uh, more challenging time of straining it because the uh, blender with the sharper blades broke down the coconut more and it's a much smaller particles. So some of those particles are getting stuck in the sieve and actually going through the sieve into our milk. And in my opinion, that's a good thing because that's what a blender is supposed to do. It's supposed to break down whatever you put in there. A little bit more and then we could go ahead and test results. There we go. So you can see the results of the test. It looks like on the Omega blender, looks like it didn't create quite as much coconut milk and the reason for that is because most of the coconut is left here in the solids. Now this is actually, you know, actually uh, broken down fairly well, but you could definitely still see chunks of coconut in there. On the Vitamix craft, it's a lot more full, and that's because the particle size of the coconut was uh, ground up so much that's actually nice and fine. And I mean, literally in this, you can still see some chunks, but it's more like uh, mush, actually.
So on this test, I'll have to give it to the Vitamix. The Vitamix with its sharper blade and higher RPMs just does a much better job of the cutting than the Omega Blender with its more power and duller blades and not as high RPM. So while the Omega Blender does look good on paper being three horsepower instead of the tube on the Vitamix, the real world performance for making coconut milk is not quite there. Next, let's do the test that you've been waiting for. This is the blender torture test. Next, what we're gonna do is the blender torture test and how we're gonna do this is we're gonna put the blenders under incredible loads. The hardest thing for blenders to blend are things that are nice and thick consistency and what thicker thing can we use than the coconut uh, that we just blended up. So we're gonna go ahead and half up each of the pulps here in the from the pre previous uh, blend off and we're gonna put half of it into the Vitamix and we're gonna put the other half into the Omega and now we're gonna go ahead and uh, cut this one in half too and we're gonna do the same exact thing we're gonna go ahead and put one half into the Omega and the other half into the Vitamix. In addition to that stuff, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add more coconut meat. So this is actually gonna be really uh, nice and thick and uh, difficult for the blender to blend up. It's gonna put a lot of resistance against the motor. So we're just gonna go ahead and tear these uh, pieces of coconut up and put it in the Vitamix. And now we're gonna go ahead and put these pieces in the Omega. Now this is approximately uh, two coconuts going into each of these machines and they're approximately the same exact consistency. So next we're gonna go ahead and put the tops on and we're just gonna run these machines and just see what happens. The most important thing we're gonna need to do in this uh, test here is to make sure that the blade is blending up everything and it's coming in full contact with the blade here. go ahead and uh, turn this up to high and put it on infinity and we're gonna go ahead and turn this one up to high as well all right so ready one two three blend as you just saw we had some cavation or cavitation and what happens is there's just not enough liquid in the blender for it to blend properly. Now I do have another video on YouTube that explains cavitation and how to prevent it basically by adding more liquids, which we can do, but then that's gonna make it a lot easier for the blender to blend. What we wanna do is basically give it the most fiber and make the blender have the hardest time blending. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use some tampers. So we have the tamper that comes with the Vitamix and we also have a tamper that came with another Vitamix craft that we're gonna use on the Omega. Now the Omega says no tamper required, but in this situation, we are gonna need the tamper. So let's go ahead and take this top off here and uh, let's once again turn both machines on and try to tamper the stuff in to see if we could get it to blend. If not, we're gonna add equal parts of water into each blender so that it can start to blend and uh, blend up our nice thick mixture to see which a blender is going to be more powerful in the long run. One, two, three. All right, so we are doing that test, trying to just keep it running, keep it going. And uh, let's see, let me show you what happened. What happened was most of the stuff in the uh, Omega wouldn't get blended because my tamper wasn't the optimal size to get everything blended down to the right particle size. So there's still actually pretty large uh, chunks inside here. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and try to push this in here because I do want to try to continue the test. But basically what happened in the Vitamix is that it actually, get, it actually started getting so liquid, actually it's a little bit warm, that this is a nice thick congealed mixture and check it out I mean that's how thick the Vitamix can make it now because the Omega wasn't able to actually blend it all up it wasn't able to do that because it 
just wasn't able to blend it all up because I wasn't it did I didn't have the tamper that was long enough to push in there once again the Omega does not include the tamper this tamper happens to be a tamper for a actually smaller size craft of the Vitamix so let me see if I can just go ahead and uh, get this uh, mixture actually blended up pretty good just like that one and so we can continue this test So I almost got this to a liquid consistency so that it will blend on its own because after all this test is meant to, you know, see how much we could load down the motor if the motor will actually stop on us. Uh, so what we're going to have to do here to make it work is we're going to have to add a little bit of water to the o Omega blender. And I'm not going to do this to the Vitamix because it was able on its own to get it to a nice thick consistency. And uh, what we're going to do next is we're just going to go ahead and uh, start blending up in each of the blenders. So I couldn't get either of these blenders to shut off in any, you know, a short amount of time. Uh, they kept doing their job and, you know, they may be a little bit warm. But, I mean, look at this. These are two super thick mixtures right there. Totally, like, thick. We had them, as you just saw, we had them both running very slowly, blending and mixing. And, man, this stuff is nice, rich, and thick. So if you want to make a nice, thick, like, coconut pudding... This is one of my favorite recipes to do something like this with some dates and vanilla bean. Oh, it's so delicious. I mean, both these blenders perform really well. As you saw, had a much easier time uh, blending with the Vitamix. But both these crafts are a little bit warm, and that's basically because just the friction that's being run through the blender as it's running. So generally, the longer you run your blender, the warmer it will get. So uh, for best results, you always want to run the blender the shortest amount of time that you possibly can to get the desired result. Both these machines <laughs> worked really well. <laughs> if I did have to say one was better than the other, I'd have to go with the uh, Vitamix Turbo Blend VS. It made a thicker consistency. It caught a lot easier when blending something really thick. It actually didn't uh, give out once we are going. And it comes with the uh, full package so that you can make the positive dietary and lifestyle changes you need so that you can be much healthier. So for its first entry into the blender market, I think the BL630 by Omega, three horsepower, 10 year warranty is a great start, but I would encourage them to uh, make the blade sharper and uh, increase the RPMs because it uh, shows here in the test results that the Vitamix with its 10,000 higher RPMs or revolutions per minute and its sharper blade performed better than a machine with actually physically more horsepower. So if I had to go with one, I would still go with the Vitamix Turbo Blend VS. Vitamix has been a long-standing company in the United States making really great and dependable blenders. And the Vitamix Turbo Blend is no different. So I hope you've enjoyed this episode learning more about the Vitamix Turbo Blend VS and the Omega BL630. Once again, my name is John Kohler with DiscountJuicers.com. Be sure to visit DiscountJuicers.com slash YouTube for special promotional offers for our YouTube visitors.